I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the Rejected. In the name of Allah, the Gracious, the Merciful. I'd like to share with you my story to a life devotee. <clears throat> my journey begins when I was a Jehovah's Witness. When I was 11 years old, I had admired the dedication to religion that I saw from some members of the Kingdom Hall. I asked my mother that I spend more time with a pioneer, which is someone who has dedicated their life to the Kingdom Hall. I was partnered with Daniel, who was a young and recent pioneer for the Jehovah's Witness community. Daniel taught me the Bible and how to convey this message of Christianity to my neighbors. At the age of 14, I received the news that would ultimately change the direction of my spiritual journey. My mother told us that we are no longer welcome in the Jehovah's Witness community because they had discovered that my sister and I were born before my parents were married. My mother immediately told both of us to continue our search for God and to find Him wherever He may be. I started taking long walks thinking about my God, wondering where He sits and what role does He have in my life. I would contemplate whether I should start praying in my own way or just commit to any Christian church. Along my journey, I met my first Muslim friend. We would have long talks about the ideas of God that I have come to develop. The more we discussed religion, the more I found my beliefs to be parallel to the Islamic teachings about God. So I became more curious about Islam until life took me to live in Alberta, where I stayed with my aunt in 2007. While in Alberta, I decided to find a mosque and ask some more questions. I went on a Friday and I arrived early so that I could speak with someone before the prayer began. Unfortunately, no one was available to speak, so I found a Quran and I sat at the front of a large room and began reading. I felt a wonderful feeling coming over me and so I closed my eyes and I began to speak to God. I remember asking him, if I had come to the wrong place to find him, then to please guide me to the right place, wherever that may be. Then a man began the call to prayer. The man sounded so wonderful. Again, I closed my eyes tight and begged Allah to guide me. I opened my eyes and the room was full and I was sitting at the front row, surrounded by Muslims. Now everything began to move so fast. Everyone stood up, so I stood up with them. Then I heard, Allahu Akbar. I realized that I had become part of the prayer service and there was no way for me to leave. So I moved as they moved. When they bowed, I bowed, glancing from left to right, looking for what to do next. At the end of the prayer, I looked to my left and noticed everyone looking at me, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So I turned quickly to my right as to look away, but again, everyone looking at me, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I put my head down, and the prayer had ended. At this moment, I had taken part in my first Joma prayer. After the prayer, I asked if I could borrow an English Quran to read at home. When I was presented with a Quran, I was told that Ramadan was starting in a few days and that some people can read the entire Quran in 30 days. I was also told that if I wished, I could fast like the Muslims, but there was no pressure to do this. I immediately went home and I told my aunt everything that had happened and that when Ramadan started, I was going to fast, as the Muslims do. My aunt and her family were very supportive. They listened to me as I read through the entire Quran. My aunt felt happy to learn that Islam teaches equality amongst men and women, contrary to her long-held belief that Islam suppressed women's rights. By the end of Ramadan, I had read the whole Quran, and I was very pleased with all that I had learned. 
In, two, in December 2007, I returned to my family in Hamilton and told them the news. I was given freedom to worship my God without any difficulties. Alhamdulillah. I told the news to my first Muslim friend. He told me to come to his mosque and do shahada and that the mosque I had first went to belonged to the Shiite and so I was to attend his mosque and become a Sunni. I told him I only wanted to be a Muslim and that the different kinds of Muslims were none of my concern. After a few months, I started working for my stepdad at his restaurant. Near there was a mosque, a short walking distance. So I asked to take leave for 30 minutes to attend Friday prayer at the mosque. And my stepdad allowed me up to four hours off for this purpose. I went to the mosque and sat in the corner and listened to the sermon. This became my weekly ritual. A few months later, after Joma, a very kind and sweet man approached me. He asked if I knew what sect this mosque belonged to. I knew it wasn't Sunni or Shiite, but I replied that the different kinds of Muslims are none of my concern. He said that this sect is special and had a very special leader named Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, on whom be peace. He told me that this special leader is the promised Messiah whose coming was foretold by all religions. I was so excited to hear this news that I asked him, does everybody know this? He said that every Ahmadi is to convey the news of the promised Messiah's arrival so that the world may know him. Right then, I offered to Nawafal for guidance from Allah. During this prayer, a strong feeling of being late for something had begun to make me very anxious. I finished my prayer and told him I was eager to join the community right then. However, he advised me to learn a little more about Ahmadiyyat before making my decision. To me, that was not necessary. After the feeling I had just felt, I only wanted to be among those who had believed. After reading about the life of the promised Messiah on whom be peace, I met with two very special Ahmadis to me, Atao Wahid Lahey and Ansar Raza. They gave me the book Ahmadiyyat, the True Islam, and a documentary about marriage and relationships in Islam. That night, on September 16, 2008, I signed my bat. Nara Takbir! Nara Takbir! Islam Ahmadiyyat! Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa! Ghulam Ahmad Ki! Khilafati Ahmadiyyat! Nara Takbir! Shortly after signing my bat form, I expressed my interest in becoming a life devotee, but I was advised to ponder more about my decision and in the meantime study the teachings of the Promised Messiah. Now I would like to fast forward five years to my blessed meeting with our beloved Khalifatul Masih, may Allah be his helper, in February 2013. I had arrived in UK after 11 a.m. for a layover on my way back to Canada from attending the 100-year Jalsa in Bangladesh. I went to Fuzzle Masjid to see if I could meet with our beloved Huzuri Anwar. They informed me that this is not the usual time to meet with him, so I requested they give him a letter that my three-year-old daughter had wrote to Huzuri Anwar. Upon receiving the letter, I was invited to meet the Khalifatul Masih. My first question was a very bold question. I asked Huzuri Anwar if Allah speaks to him. He told me that we usually don't ask this from people. I said okay and I lowered my head. And again I repeated my question. Huzur, does Allah speak to you? This time he answered me by stating that if Allah tells him something to announce to the community, it would likely be in his Friday sermons and that I should listen closely to his Friday sermons. He then informed me about his advice to the community 
that every Ahmadi in the world should pray for Ahmadis in Pakistan regarding their persecution. I asked him, was this inspired by Allah? And he answered in the affirmative. I then asked Hazuri Anwar if Allah inspired him to travel the world advising the various nations to lean towards peace and work together to establish justice in the respective nations. He answered in the affirmative. Now fast forward another five years to my trip to UK this January with the new Ahmadis organized by Kodam Ahmadiyya Canada. My younger brother Derek and I were both blessed to attend this trip together. During this trip, I met with a Waqfa Zindigi who was a journalist with MTA International. As we were walking, I narrated the story about my meeting with Hazuri Anwar in which I had asked him if Allah speaks to him. He stopped and turned to me and asked if I had heard stories of some members whom Allah had a close relationship with. He asked if I heard about Hazrat Malvi Gulam Rasul Raziki Sahib. May Allah be pleased with him. I responded very happily that I had heard his stories and that he had asked if I heard the stories regarding the close relationship of that of Bashir Orchard Saab. May Allah have mercy on him. I responded again happily that I had heard his stories. After mentioning a couple more individuals whom Allah had a close relationship, he asked me like a whip cracking through the air, and you had to ask the Khalifa of Islam if Allah speaks to him? Instantly, I had realized in that moment that I had not truly understood the status of the Khalifa al Masih. I used to narrate this story of my meeting with Azur Yanwar, in which I asked him if Allah speaks to him with great pride. Now I was ashamed to express my ignorance of his divine appointment as Khalifa al Masih. During the rest of the trip, I begged Allah for forgiveness of my ignorance and for narrating my meeting with Azuri Anwar with such pride. I returned home and my heart could not stop regretting how little I understood about Khalafat. Then one night, while watching Hazuri Anwar on MTA, a powerful thought came into my mind that Khalafat is real. So I asked myself, if Khalafat is real, then the promised Messiah is real. And if he is real, then our beloved Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he is real. And if he is real, then Allah is real. At that exact moment, my heart had pledged its allegiance to Islam Ahmadiyyat. I then wrote to my beloved Amir al-Mu'mineen, and I was humbled that he accepted me as a waqf zindagi I now humbly request that my dear brothers and sisters of this blessed Jamaat ask the answerer of prayers, the bestower of faith, to increase our understanding of Khalafat and to increase our devotion to the service of Islam Ahmadiyyat. May Allah enable myself and all of you to fulfill our bat that we have taken at the hand of our beloved Khalifatul Masih. Amin. Allahumma amin.